Hello, I'm Phoebe Leger, and welcome to Roulette TV, a partnership between Roulette Intermedium and Downtown Community Television. This series presents the frontier edge of music and intermedia performance. Our guest tonight is Letitia Tsunami. French-born, Oakland-based Letitia Tsunami can create a symphony with the wave of her hand. She plays an instrument of her own design which is called the Lady's Glove. This elbow-length glove is embedded with dozens of sensors, transducers, accelerometers, and ultrasound detectors. The Lady's Glove is perhaps the ultimate in cyber haute couture. We are very honored to have Letitia Tsunami. She will present Why Dreams Like a Loose Engine, an Auto Portrait, with live electronics controlled by the Lady's Glove and a text by Melody Sumner Carnahan. for centuries, but you will get there. You're looking through a book about macaws, how to choose and care for a macaw. Reading is required. Shine animal fur and fake gold, Mexican silver, perfume and powder you ride. To the end of your sensation, sensibility, imagination, sanity, or desire. 
notice the hair and moles on the back of the handsome young man sitting in front of you. Each hair, each mole disgusts you. Across the eye, lovers in her compact, she narrows his image. A moat in her eyes, he makes crude jokes about the people walking by. You never smile. You're a victim of the noise. The noise has no God. have arrived before after the conductor announces them you're not sure why you're afraid to ask the conductor or you can't get his attention or he doesn't understand your questions you close the book cross your hands and look into the dark light of your rings you like your rings you like the gems you like the stones You're capricious and glamorous and rich, perhaps. Or you're running all the time from your persistent and consumptive interest. Shoes particularly interest you at this time. They seem to signal upcoming reversals in attitude. The direction of weather, symbolism, a decline, or simply an obsession with what is natural, physical, and known. The men on this train have beards. Their beards match the color of their pubic hair and their eyes. They worry about cards. They replace and distribute slits of paper. They punch, they punch, they punch all invaluable objects and throw them to the ground. aren't wearing shoes. They have all just graduated and are on their way away for the second time. Something's new? A new life? A new pair of shoes? You don't comprehend their sentences. You are wearing someone else's shoes and they hurt you. Trace the word by on the inside of your glass with your fingernail. The wrinkles in your hand are deeper than the wrinkles around your eyes. And then, he wants money. Coins drop back into your hand, hot. The inside of your coat is the color of a church on fire. The patterns on the old woman's scarves lead you into her thoughts. She died when her last child was born. She's going to see him now. He hasn't a face. He's a disgrace to the family. His scalp is covered with large red moles. His heart is in three sections. He directs the blood the wrong way. There is no heat in his touch. There isn't much she can do. You wipe the grease and smoke from your glasses. You examine the equipment. You'll need it to care for the Macau. <laughs> Macaus eat only rare fruits. You must inject the Macau with expensive vitamins. You must clip its claws. And the personality? It 
might be disagreeable, might be untamable. Look into its eyes, an infection in one eye. You blow smoke into it. You have too many bad habits. You will shave your head again. You will live in disguise. You remove a flashback from your wallet, and then, and then you begin, and then, and then, and then. And then, you begin to cry. Thank <laughs> you. 
You have too many bad habits. You will shave your head again. You will live in disguise. You get off the train. You will use steel. You will make something out of steel. <sighs> Letitia, that was a brilliant performance. Thank you. <laughs> Tell us about your instrument, the lady's glove. The lady's glove is your own design, but could you tell us how this glove creates sound? Well, the way it's uh, uh, studded with a variety of sensors, and uh, there are magnetic sensors, switches, and uh, what's called resistive strips, which actually are a variety of, of pressure sensors, ultrasound, accelerometers, and all these sensors uh, produce uh, a, a variation in voltage when activated. So what happens is that this uh, very fluctuating voltage as created by the sensors responding to a different set of actions goes into this box, which is called the sensor lab, which was made by Stein in uh, Amsterdam, and it converts it into MIDI, which is the type of information that the computer uh, needs, most music software. So it goes in the computer as MIDI, and uh, so this is your MIDI controller. This is a MIDI controller. It can you can think of it as a flexible keyboard or a flexible. What are the magnets? Recording. Well, there's only one magnet on the thumb, oh. and when I move my fingers like this, the sensors which are in the on the tip of the fingers, which are called Hall effect sensors, uh, get. Uh, activated by getting close to the magnet and this is what's used in alarm systems for instance windows you know <sighs> when you open the window there's more than a certain allowable distance uh, and then it triggers the alarm so these are it's the same sense and the distance is judged from it seems that you have something on your shoe yeah i have uh, ultrasound which is uh, dis uh, measures distance and what happens is i have the emitter in the hand, the ultrasound emitter in the ah, palm of the hand mm -hmm. here. And uh, the receivers are on the other hand and on the foot. So the distances between both arms and my hand and the floor are uh, being uh, calculated, received them in the computer. Well, it's just genius. And it's, it seems to speak to all of us on a very deep level. It's, it, you have somehow uh, made electronic music and digital music, which has become rather sterile, you've made it uh, uniquely personal and somehow even f female. <laughs> I didn't want to say feminine, but yeah. female. It is, yeah. That, it was a little the idea. I, I mean, there were several reasons, but one of the reasons is, is definitely to have some kind of a central device because there was uh, a lot of the control, I mean not that many, but some of the controls that came out uh, in the late 80s were this very robotic, masculine, let's fight the war kind of controller. <laughs> so I thought mine will be this French sexy controller. Oh, uh, you've done it. Well, uh, what you do is so, so sexy uh, <laughs> and you're so smart. And yet you say, you've said that the lady's glove lets you bypass the brain. Can you tell us why anyone would want to bypass the brain? Well, uh, it goes back to sexiness, you know. <laughs> but uh, uh, I think that, um, uh, as I said, the hand is wired 
to the brain. So obviously there's a system uh, where the brain is, is some kind of making decisions. But I think more and more uh, the research seems to show that uh, intelligence is actually localized in, in specific areas of the body. You know, mm. it's not just now. Less and less, I think, uh, there, the, there's the idea of the brain uh, directing everything. I mean, I think in the spine, they're discovering that the spine has a lot of uh, localized uh, intelligence and memories of, of, mm. of uh, behavior. And the heart, too, apparently. And the heart, yes. supposedly, <laughs> you would hope. But <laughs> there's, no, so I think that uh, bypassing the brain is in the sense of bypassing the brain uh, as this, you know, 19th century model of, of, of decision and just bringing it into just experience, which uh, is more of a, permeates the body. And so it was a way to kind of get to the body and have the body, which actually a lot of instrumentalists already know. You know, when they use an instrument, there's a logic, there's a physicality that goes with the instrument that makes them interact because of the way that instrument is built. And then computer music came along, and you could have cut everybody's body off. You know, it was like suddenly, it was like, oh, we don't need any more the body. You barely need the brain in the jar. And, you know, it's okay. So I think that there was this uh, odd shift, you know, of like suddenly removing the physicality, which is, I think, one of the issues of the digital age, you know, m removing from the mechanisms and, you know, mechanical uh, gestures or just, you know, body gestures and going into this, you know, disembodied uh, entities. Can you talk about the influence of sign language on your work? Yeah, the, I think the, the, the idea of sign language... Uh, I mean, it didn't have a direct influence in the sense that I don't know sign language, but there were some ideas. First, I always thought people who do sign language is extremely uh, loud. You know, it's interesting. You don't hear anything, <laughs> but it's so loud and it's so busy. And I was always fascinated by this contrast between the silence and, the, and so much data is being transmitted, you know, but you don't hear mm. it or you don't see it. Mm. And uh, so that was very fascinating, this idea of modifying and, and, and creating a communication with something that I personally did not understand. And then there was also the idea, for instance, the ultrasound uh, came from uh, the, some lecture I had heard of uh, someone describing um, the, the distance between the hands when people do sign language is like the emotions and the loudness. It's, the, it's adding variety, it's adding the, the it, it's modifying the, the speech. So that's when I added the ultrasound. I thought, well, it would be nice instead of having just the hand doing thing, that the meaning of the hand changes according to where it is in space. So that was an, an influence and uh, is inspiring. You spent many years in Paris and I love Paris so much, I always wonder why any French person would want to come to America if they could live in France. Uh, what made you come here and what, what made you move to California? We'd like to have you here in New York City with us. <laughs> well, the idea of uh, moving uh, from France was the idea of actually uh, getting, being a little free from uh, tradition. And um, it's uh, very difficult in Europe to create uh, outside of known references, you know, it's a, it's a lot of the art is referential, and there's a very strong tradition. And I, California is pretty much without much, you know, without tradition as far as art. And I mean, people would be upset, but even culturally, it's, it's pretty blank slate. So there was that, and then there was the idea also that technology in California was very uh, easily accessible. And you could, you know, it's cheap. There's plenty of army supply stores <laughs> that you can buy electronics and blow them up and buy more and blow them <laughs> up. And so the whole uh, idea of using technology was very different than in Europe. It was uh, cheaper and you didn't have to go to an institution or you didn't have to hire an engineer. The idea was that if you want to do that, well, you just have to learn to do it yourself, which for me was such a mind-blowing concept because the idea was like, well, I need something, then you find someone who knows how to do it. It wouldn't occur to you to do it yourself. So that was very freeing to just kind of get your hands involved in doing things. That's, that's mm. great. Uh, but some of this glove was developed in Holland? 
No, what happened is that uh, I made a, a series of gloves. I started with a kitchen glove for the perfect housewife. <laughs> and uh, you could do music while you did the dishes. And then eventually <laughs> it moved into more sophisticated gloves. And the Stime Institute uh, was uh, like the glove that I had made and hired uh, someone, Bert Bongers, who is an engineer in Holland, to replicate this glove I had made and created this new one based on that design. And it obviously was better than mine uh, electronics, which were very, you know, a lot of glue and tape. But uh, so it, this particular one was made in, in uh, Holland. And how much of what we saw tonight was improvised? Do you do much improvisation? Um, I have, I'm doing more improvisation now with other musicians and, uh, you know, this instrument is not very smart, so you have to program everything. So if you're going to improvise, you have to program the improvisation, which means you have to really define the rules of, of, uh, of the game. And in my case, I have to map all the sensors to particular events. So I have a very clear idea of what sounds will be triggered by what sensor and how I will move, because I cannot suddenly decide I'm going to trigger something else, or I want something else to happen, because it has to be pre-programmed. I loved the text. Uh, the more I heard it, the more I enjoyed it. Uh, they were written by Melody Sumner. Is it important for, uh, for you to collaborate with women? And uh, do you think, what, was this, what did this friendship uh, add? Was this a vital part of your development as oh, an yeah, artist? Oh, yeah, I think she's, she's very uh, vital in my uh, work because uh, I used her works a lot, her text a lot. And, you know, it's, it's a, they're, they're fascinating, they're quirky or they're funny or they're strange. So that definitely adds a whole layer to my work, which would be more, you know, less interesting if uh, I didn't have a chance to work with her. And I think being a woman, yes, it is important because uh, a lot of the text refer to women's lives. So it's a little harder for a man to talk about women's lives, you know, and, and I like that personal, uh, she often describes these characters or these scenes that, that have this, this sensitivity, sensibility, which is, uh, I think, uh, a feminine, but without making categories, I would say it's feminine. So we have a collaboration for the last 20 years about, so, it's, uh, it's been really uh, interesting, you know, too. Also, she's pretty free about me changing her texts around, you know, moving things, and which is also... Letitia, it's been wonderful having you here. We were deeply honored, and uh, we just, we, we're just so impressed with everything about your art. It's just wonderful. Thank you for sharing yeah, it with thank us. thank you.